Today I would like to talk to you about the Behringer X-Touch editor using the X-Touch Mini as an example. Please subscribe to my channel, I would really appreciate it, and it's best to click the bell so you don't miss any new videos. A negative point of the editor is that it is only available for Windows. For people like me who are in the Apple ecosystem, that's not so great. I use a virtual machine with a Windows system for this. It's not ideal, and there is also no editor for iPad or Android systems. The nice thing is that the editor works for both the X-Touch Compact and the X-Touch Mini, which I will use as an example here. Unfortunately, the editor does not always recognize the device right away on the first attempt. You can tell this because nothing can be selected in the hardware and it still shows as dummy. So I unplug the controller from the USB port and plug it back in, and normally it should recognize it then. Sometimes you just have to restart the program again. We can see now that the editor has found the device. We simply click on close. The error message is not of interest to us right now, and we also see under hardware xtouch mini hashtag 1 that we now have the option to load or save the open presets on the computer. We can pull layer A or layer B from the xtouch mini or xtouch compact to the computer, or send it to the hardware, and we can perform a firmware update. Then we see the device ID, the global channel that we can set, and the mode standard that we are working with here, or MC, which we will discuss another time. I just mentioned layer A or layer B. The Behringer xtouch essentially has two controller layers, namely A and B. Here, the controllers can be assigned in a dual manner. So, let's move on to the next tab, Fader. The device has a fader in this case, where we can select the channel at the top. Then we can choose whether a CC, a pitch bend, or a program change is sent, and later on, we can set exactly what happens. What I like, unlike my nanopad, is that I can set a minimum value and a maximum value for the CC. Here, and this is possible for each controller. When I set the program change, I can send an MSB and an LSB. And when I set the pitch bend, I can also set the min and max. This principle applies to everyone, and in the upper right corner, you can see a field labeled edited, which means I have changed something. I can do the same for the encoders now. These are the knobs, specifically on the push side. I can press a button here. This means I can select a channel for each button. I can choose for each whether I want to send a CC, a note, a pitch bend, a program change, or MMC. Then I can select the number below. These will of course be different. Things depending on what I have set above. Then again, minimum value, maximum value. Underneath, I can then set how the button reacts in behavior. Momentary means that when I press and hold the button, something happens. When I release it, that stops. This action that I have set up, when I press toggle, means that I press it. The action is triggered. I press it again, the action is stopped. MSB and LSB explain themselves for program change. Then we have turn below, which is what happens when I turn the knobs. Here, I can also select a channel for each knob individually. I really have endless possibilities for control, and can again choose the type as mentioned above. That's actually the same thing. The only additional aspect is that I can set how the LED ring reacts. I admit that I currently don't remember the differences between single pan, fan, spread, and trim off the top of my head. However, this can be read in the manual. It's simply that the LED limits can be represented differently. This makes sense for different applications. For panning, it certainly makes sense. So when I pan the sound, an LED function is displayed that represents that. And, yes, you just have to try it out. Then we switch to the buttons tab. Basically, it's the same as with the encoders, where I press. I can choose between pads 1 to 8 and 9 to 16 below, and can set everything just like with the push encoders. Here again, I can send what I have just set to the hardware, either dump A or dump B, which are the different layers, or I can retrieve it from a hardware device, and then it can play others. I hope I could help a bit. The editor is actually relatively easy to use, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Otherwise, we will see and hear each other in the next video.